get to our next speaker. I introduced our first speaker, Menno, by using a quote, and I think I also found a suitable Steve Jobs quote for the next speaker. You've got to start with the customer experience and work back toward the technology, not the other way around. Our next speaker also always puts the user first. Matt is senior front-end developer at Debt Amsterdam, and he loves, uh, he loves things that are pretty and fast. He's here today to make accessibility more accessible, because according to him, accessibility is often ignored, but important as fuck. Say hi to Matt. Can we not do this anymore? We're still a little bit excited for a second talk. No one wants to leave yet. Hey! <laughs> so, over the past few years, people have tried to make life as comfortable and accessible as we can possibly be. And me personally, I've had a pretty successful life so far. I have a nice job, I have the opportunity to speak here. I have a beautiful, really, really expensive house in Amsterdam which is the best city in the world. And I have some really nice friends. There's actually some sitting right here. But one of those friends is Florian. Florian and I, back in the days when we were still in school, we were working at a small student company, just trying to get a little bit of extra money on top of the student burst, which is now gone. And actually I was working together with these two guys as well. And all of us, we are, we were, still are, developers. But Florian, completely blind. Can't see a thing. I'm not sure if any of you have ever seen any form of code. It's just one big vertical line of colorful pieces of text which have some form of function or other. So how does that work? How does a guy who can't see a thing perform such a visual task? Well, Florian doesn't care. For him, that's just life. He just needs a few extra things to get by. He needs a dog, he needs a cane, and he needs a screen reader. And what a screen reader is, I will give you an example of. It is a piece of existive technology that gives Florian audio feedback. So it tells him what is happening. And it sounds a little bit like this. WhatsApp notification from Florian. You're using me as a screen reader example again? I am Florian. So Florian just sent me a message and the screen reader told me what was happening. And to us this might seem very logical and very good to understand. But now I will give you an example of how Florian uses it. This is Florian using Google. Google.com, insertion at end of text, address and search bar, edit text. Google.com, selected Google web content. Link, net, link, 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 on field, Google, search, search, combo, Google account, Google web content, link. That's interesting, right? So Google is being read to him, and the speed I just gave this example of is not actually the speed he's using it at. He actually uses it a little faster, and I can assure you that none of us will be able to understand what he can understand. But Florian isn't alone in the Netherlands. 12.9% of everyone in the Netherlands has one or more disabilities. And these disabilities range from slight color blindness to full-on physical immobility. And you can imagine that having one of these disabilities makes using the digital projects that we make today just a little bit more tricky. So on July 14, 2016, a UN resolution went into effect that wants to guard, warrant, and improve the rights of people with a disability in the Netherlands. And for us, that basically means the products that we make need to have same level of access and functionality for anyone that uses it, for able-bodied people and people with a disability. Following up on this, the College for the Human Rights did an investigation on 10 of the largest Dutch web shops, five of their energy providers, and five of their travel agencies. Besides that, 1,833 websites were automated tested 
on accessibility on several criteria. And the result? We can do a lot better. Out of all the web shops that were investigated, half of them have an average of 13 hurdles that prevent a person from completing an order flow without any form of assistance. So that's, uh, that's a pretty depressing story I just told you. All of our digital products are bad, right? Nothing is accessible. So we're going to dive into the data, and I'm going to give you some examples of what that transfers to in numbers. So 12.9% of everyone in the Netherlands has one or multiple disabilities. These can be divided into three categories. On one hand, we have sight, we have mobility, and we have hearing. And if you're wondering, why don't these add up to 12.9%? Well, it's because people can have multiple. Sight and mobility combined is 13%. And this is an important number because the digital products that we make, that we use every day, are mostly controlled by sight and mobility. But that number is a little bit misconstrued because on the one end, we have the 16 to 20 year olds that only have 2.1% uh, have an, uh, any form of disability. And on the other hand, we have the 55 to 65 year olds which, uh, where 17.8% has one or more disabilities. So this is important to keep in mind for the products that we make that there's difference in the target groups. And for the Dutch working population, 10% has any form of disability ranging from sight, mobility, to vision. So I'm going to show you some examples. Most of you will probably know Ball.com, one of the largest web shops in the Netherlands. And they um, are currently so big that they're reaching their marketing potential. And I'm going to show you two examples of where they can improve accessibility. On one end, we have the focus indicator, which means there is some kind of visual feedback when I'm tabbing through the website. When you guys use a website, most of you will probably use a mouse or trackpad or smartphone. But you know where you're going to click with your mouse or where you're going to tap with your finger. So you know where your focus currently is. Imagine being completely immobile and you not having access to a mouse or a touchpad. You will probably use assistive technology that uses form of uses uh, the tab key on your, on your keyboard. And that taps to every interactive element on the website from left to right, from top to bottom, in order of how they are on the website. So, and that is also the tab index. So I'm going to show you the focus indicator, which is the visual feedback of the tab index of the order of how we go to the website. So I'm on ball.com, and they offered me a pretty good dog deal. And I want to get through that. So right now, I'm tabbing through the website to try and get to the dog deal. And as you see, something is happening here in the bottom. Something is changing. But other than that, there's not much visual feedback. Right now, I've tapped around 50 times just to get to the dog deal. And it's taken me a good minute to get there. And there's no feedback of where I am. I don't know where I am, and I don't know how long it's going to take me to get there. And I'm going to show you an example of a project that I worked on at Debt, where we encountered similar problems, and we come up with different solutions. So first, when you tab into the website, you get offered quick links that allow you to quickly jump to a functionality or a section of the website, jumping past an entire navigation that might take me 20 times to get through. Also, as you might see, whenever there is something interactive that I can click on, I am shown visual feedback with the blue background behind the links, which show me that there's something to do. There's something I can click on. And by doing this, we not only at least improve the accessibility, but we also improve the user experience for the rest of the users of the website. So we're pretty comfortable. We spend around 100 hours on ATOS, and we think we built the most accessible website ever. This is the best shop we've ever built, and everyone can use it. So I want to test this out. Gave my boy Florian a ring. Say, hey. 
build this website. You want to come and have a look at it? He says, yeah, sure. So um, we bring him over to Rotterdam, pick him up from the train station, bring him over to the Rotterdam office. A lot of development colleagues are there. We're all going to look at the Atos website because it's perfect, right? Built the thing, it's working fine. So Florian goes to work, and within three minutes, he founds about five scenarios where we messed up. Site wasn't accessible, menu was terrible, it was just things going wrong. And what I learned from this is that you should not assume that you know everything. Me, as an able-bodied person, I cannot see what he sees. Because he encounters way different scenarios than we normally would. So don't assume that you know, but have someone from your target group test it, then you know. So, accessibility is important, but it costs a lot of time and money, right? Time that you can spend on different features, features that bring in a lot more money. But what if I tell you that accessibility is actually an opportunity to, on one hand, improve conversion, and on the other hand, better your brand? Let's have a look at Bold.com again. Bold.com, with their marketing campaigns, their social media presence, are one of the biggest web shops in the Netherlands, and they currently are at risk of hitting their market cap. There's just not enough people for Bold.com. They've reached everyone. But the 10% of the working Dutch working population has one or more disabilities. The working force in the Netherlands consists of 7.9 million people. 10% of that is 790,000 people. Bol.com has a potential of up to 790,000 extra people for them to reach if they would invest more in accessibility. And there's also the marketing potential. Bol.com already is a huge love brand. A love brand is a brand that people are so enthusiastic about, you want to talk about it. Have you seen the new social media campaign for Bol? Have you seen the Instagram post? It's really funny. So, Bol is already a love brand, but by investing more in accessibility, they could become an even bigger love brand. They could truly become the winkel van ons allemaal, the shop for everyone. So you're convinced, accessibility has to happen. Time is no issue, we have the money, we want to do this. And Bol.com already is. They are working on every new feature that they built to make it as accessible as possible, to retroactively improve their website. So Bol.com is already making the change. And if you want to make the change, it might seem like a huge task to do. Like, where do we start? But you don't have to fix the entire problem in one time. I'm going to give you some tips on how to approach improving accessibility for your product. So first, determine your intent. Why do you want to do accessibility? Do you want to make your site more legible for the elderly? Or do you want to increase more conversion for your product? Determining this intent is important for knowing what you can improve. Accessibility is huge. There's color blindness, there's people with immobility, there's screen readers. What are you going to fix? So think of where your focus is going to be and what you want to fix. And from that, make a list. Simply make a list with all the things that you want to fix, prioritize them, and give them an estimation. And keep those stories small. Like, make small issues of what you want to fix. If you have some time left in your development cycle and you want to pick up one of those smaller stories from the backlog, you can. If you want to spend an entire sprint on accessibility, great, go ahead. But you have the opportunity to decide the pace to start working on it as long as you do. And get involved with testers. Don't make the same mistake that I did. Don't assume that you know, but get professionals involved that can help you. And make accessibility part of your workflow. The more you include accessibility in your design, in your development, the less time it will eventually take. So don't see accessibility as something that is time consuming. See it as something that can help you. See it as something that can improve your brand, improve your inversion, but most importantly, see it as something that you want to do. 
as something that you, we, as a person, want to do for people. See it as something that you want to do for Florian. See it as something that you have to do. Thank you. <laughs>